wholesale. Wholesale. Cherokee greeting and wave the great feather. The great feather has been the constellation for the past month. And now we're into a new month in February. And this is Atsapiaz. Atsapiaz is now the young eagles. That is, the eagles are hatching out of their eggs. And so this month is called Atsapiaz for the young eagles. Another item for now is last Tuesday, the coyote star. The coyote star has come up on the south in the horizon like that. That's very important, very, very important. Uh, the Korea name for this, you know, is Isuri, and the Greek name for this star is Canopus. That's a town in Egypt. But more appropriate, this is the coyote star. Now what the coyote star is signaling is infinity, that humans must encounter infinity. And in Native America, what that infinity is, is what it is to stand on a hill and look all around, look to the horizon. That's the way we put it together. It's that kind of perception. So, for a short time in this month, the coyote star is visible. So that's very significant. We'll get more to that. My theme is the Kawea, that is the people to the east of here in the desert, in this large desert where the uh, Salton Sea is. At one time it was called Lake Kawea and it even goes back some millions of years to an early, early lake <clears throat> there. So the Kawea are a wellspring, really, really a wellspring. And last week, the last time I did this, you know, I reported on a site that has been um, excavated in Palm Springs or Agua Caliente that gives us a date of seven and eight thousand years for these people, the Kawea. Again, the Kawea is an American name for the Muru Awetam, which means the first people. And so now we can say these people have been present for eight thousand years like that. So starting off here with an article from Nevada, from Las Vegas, Nevada. Well, monument proposed for site sacred to tribes. Site would be called Avi Kawa Ame. So a Nevada congresswoman uh, and several elected tribal officials announced support for a national monument that designates over a broad area south of Las Vegas, which is biologically diverse and rich with Native American significance. And this is what it will be called, Avakawa Ame National Monument. And it is, uh, and the mountain range is roughly between the Colorado River and the Mojave National Preserve in California and it would include Spirit Mountain, a peak northwest of Laughlin that is called by that, that name. And uh, our creation story places us directly in the center of this area, says the, the chairman of the Fort Mojave. Um, out, our efforts, I'm trying to read this, our efforts are to protect these places of significance and sacredness while maintaining the integrity as a place of home and worship. Now, the area is 703 square miles. And so the uh, Congresswoman has sent a letter to Deb Holland, our new Secretary of the Interior, um, to tell her of the support everybody has for this. So we, we'll see that go, go through. Uh, the area for the Kuiya Nation, the territory is really marked by mountain tops. And I'm not sure of this particular mountain, which would be north of the Kuiya territory, whether it's included in that. But we are going from mountain top to mountain top. Uh, 
to designate that boundary. So that's the way we're talking here. Uh, again, the Kawea is a American term, and now we know these people are very ancient. And what I want to start with is to start with the very, very beginning. And in the very, very beginning, uh, we're saying before anything was anything, it was all only darkness, it was all only black. And in that blackness there were electrical charges, like lightning bolts and lightning bulbs. And eventually those lightning bulbs formed something of a spider web. And on the spider web, if you look right here, there were two like spider eggs. So we, we call them, and their name is, you know, the Hawahawaini. And these two spider eggs are on a silvery strand, strand of a spider web. And out of this, they begin to hatch. And two beans come out of this. The first is Mukat, and the second is Tamahuyat. And so, uh, we go over here. This is my figure for Mukat. Now it was totally black and dark, and so he had tried to open his eye. When he opened his eye, you know, it kind of was irritable, and it made his eye water. And then this water, you know, pooled down in the corner of his eye, and out of his eye ran a long streaming teardrop. And this teardrop turned into a lizard. This lizard is Muyak. And it means Muyak, the big black lizard. So that's how Muyak came into being. So now it was still very, very dark. So Muyak began to swallow the darkness. And eventually light became exposed. from the, the, So now Mukat and Tamawit could see each other. But still it wasn't totally light enough. Now come over here to this little figure. I'm figuring this little figure as Tamahuayat. He's the earth god we call him. And the spider that made these white cocoons is over here. And this white spider, this little white spider, is the parthenogenic factor. We call this spider Hawa. Hawa. And so this gave Tamawit to give Booth birth to Moon Girl. And here is Moon Girl. And she was also born with the, uh, the feminine prerogative to come and go as she pleased, as she did. But at least, you know, it gave more light. So now, Remember last week when Temabuya, he went down into the ground. Quill ye, quill ye, tamanika, mika, nika, quill ye, quill ye, go into the ground. So as he was going down into the ground and all these other um, earthborn animals went down with him, he also started to pull down the sky. <clears throat> and so Mukat, here's Mukat over here, out of his breast he pulled this big curved staff. And this is called uh, Nakwa, or Poro. And with that, he managed to hold up the sky so it wouldn't be swallowed down into the earth. And thereafter, this is my replica. It's even a little bit smaller uh, than the ones that are in existence. This becomes the staff for the shaman, the desert shaman. So that's what we have pictured here. And so the other part of this, with Temahoyet, who has gone into the earth, he is now reborn as the eagle. So you can see him here. And in the Fort Mo Mojave portion of this, this eagle now resides on the top of that spirit mountain we were reading the article about. So. That's an episode that's, you know, within this. 
The other part of this is that this cane, this is a walking cane, you know, chika ya ha api. So it means a straight cane. And that's where now this lizard, he comes and goes, but basically uh, as Mukat walks around with his walking stick, um, Boyak is in this stick. So that's what's in, important for this stick to appear here. Now, with the story of Mukak, I, I did last week, Mukak dies. He, he dies, and here, if we look right down here, you see this little stone carving of a quail. Now, the two quail, it was the mountain quail and the valley quail, and they were the two birds that mourned for him. So, that's the significance here. Also, the piece itself, this was given to me by uh, Ted Townsend, the resident Cherokee there at uh, Borrego Springs, and he knows the young native woman who carved this, and he showed me her her picture. So that's relevant, you know, to to this. Um, the other thing is here, we have these two features here, and we have with Mukhap and Tiawat. This is a dichotomy. These are two energies that in the story are constantly arguing, you know, and, and, and conflicting with each other. So that gives a basis to this society, and that is, this is Coyote, and this is Wildcat. And so this is Coyote, but also, you know, Coyote Man, he, he is uh, the, what we call the first mate. He's the first mate to Mukat. Mukat is the creator. And then here's a coyote. He's the ceremonial host. That is the office that a, a man takes uh, you know, in the society. Um, so coyote is very, very fundamental you know, throughout this culture. So that's why I have this figure here as a coyote man. And that here is the uh, wildcat. So this is the takutam, that moiety. And this would be the silly one. It, it's like that. Also, in the, uh, what do you call, the paleontology, I guess, of Borrego Springs, the wildcat and the coyote, the evidence from the fossils, have been there from, you know, two and three million years in Borrego Springs, the Borrego Desert. And the other one, you know, back to this desert here, this lizard, the lizard, has also been there for that long. But what's unique about this lizard, the lizards is that if you go to Borrego Springs and you see any lizards, these are the same lizards that originated here. These lizards have not come from anywhere else or found anywhere else. They're autochthonic lizards of the Anza Borrego Desert. So I find that very unique with the whole genesis that has just taken place um, for Muyak. Now, to come over here to this, this is another rendering from different one I had last week. Up in the town of Idlewild, up in the San Jacinto Mountains, this huge rock overlooks the little town there. And the uh, American peoples have come to call it Takwitz. Well, Takwitz is actually the location of the source where Takus. Takus is, he's, you know, kind of a testy guy. And some shamans, you know, definitely take him on as, you know, uh, you know their, their guide. He has power from him. So, what this is also is the mulak. The mulak is the pestle that we were showing last week. And here in front of it, here is a very well-used desert pestle. So, this term, the Muyak and the Mulu, um, and, and all these all feature this kind of thing. Mul, Mul, Mil, these are all cognitive. So we have many, many words in this language that are M. And they come from, in the linguist language, from it's called M Daria. M Daria is this sound that we're talking about here, M Daria. Um, 
its its genesis or its you know phyla uh, is in Arabic. So it's found to be in Arabic, and there are various features you know in this region that are noticeably Arabic. So that's the connection here of of this. Other features that are included here is this uh, painting that I did here. And I just call this, this is the Coyote Man of the Borrego Desert. So it's the apparition that I'm having there out in the desert. So very relevant to all this theme that has very much of the supernatural in it. Then we can come down here to, to this basket here. Uh, this basket is a shaman's basket. It's made of split river cane, in a, formed in, in a twill weave. But these are also made with um, bulrush, tuli, like that. And I'm also using it here in this way. It holds feathers, that's what it is. It's a, it's a feather basket. And I, I do have feathers in it, uh, the feather basket. The, each lineage, each lineage, the, wild, the wildcat lineage, the coyote lineage, any lineage, all have a medicine bundle. And I'm using this as a substitute because the medicine bundle would be too large. But the medicine bundle is made out of the tuli or it's made out of the juncus that holds, you know, the uh, sacred property of, of the group like that, so, and that's very necessary, it's called the Masawat, the Masawat. I'm using this plume basket to stand for the Masawat, the, the very necessary medicine bundle, like the Constitution of the United States would, would be like that. And in front of it, here's a, a Kawea a ladle, you know, made out of pottery. <clears throat> it would seem to be uh, a, ver a pottery version of the shell spoon, They're made out of a, she uh, a shell, I mean a uh, horn, the you know, horn of the ram probably. And if you go over here to, to this, this is a basket, and this basket is made with sumac, and sumac's a kind of wood. Now, in the food processing of these people, uh, some of the seeds, like the seeds, they have to put hot coals in there and they have to kind of um, toast these seeds in a wood basket. Before the wood baskets, it's, it's made of fiber, it's twine, so we couldn't use a hot coal. And that's why that this, this is, in order to grind these seeds, they have to be parched first. So that's a significance here. And this figure here is called Nakwili, Nakwili is an idol and it is found in that region uh, up here, east of here, in the vicinity of Yakumba that I'll talk about in a minute there. So these, these are all necessary things in order to talk about the um, Kawiya. Oh yes, right here I have a, a um, eagle fetish that I, I made that again for this this time to be very auspicious. And then these other things, these are all desert finds. You know, it's pottery. Now these people you know lived out here for a very, very, very long time. And they variously, you know, stashed things into a cache uh, for one reason or another to get it out of the weather to save it for another time. Some are even, you know, stashed for travelers. People who are traveling around would find a, a pot or a basket, you know, with some kind of nourishment and it's some kind of seeds or trail mix or something like that. So that's probably w where these had come from. Also, uh, water out here in the desert uh, is variable due to the weather. Uh, lakes, pools, ponds could be formed. Uh, they would be there for a while. 
and so people would kind of bank if you had a, a water spot you know bank it up there and maybe that's where this pot has come out of and this one is interesting this is woven like a basket with sumac and then it's been coated with pine resin pine pitch now the pines you know that grow in the mountains so people would have to get together in a group and go to harvest you know the pine nuts and so they have to, because other animals and birds everybody you know wants to eat the pine nuts so they had to get up there early and the green pine cones they would you know put them into fire so they would excrete this pine pitch i have no idea you know what kind of a receptacle they put this pitch in to be used later but that's where this is coming from it's pretty old and it's from out there in the desert there Now, next thing, this is the centerpiece here. My painting, and I have to tell you how that that has come about. Um, a little while back, a few years ago, um, Claudia was wanting to harvest um, a juniper berries, so I accompanied her as she was driving her um, four-wheel drive Toyota truck. <laughs> And we were uh, east of Yakumba, like that. And then she saw, you know, a bush, like that. So she pulled over. And when I stepped out of the cabin onto the ground, I actually felt something. I'm calling it a current came up through my my foot. And I just stayed with it. And I went towards the ditch there, and I went down through the ditch, and I kept following it. And it went a kind of a a course that had me in a dry boulder strewn wash and I went down through that wash until I came to the end of that and at the end of it this is what was there <clears throat> and this I don't know it's about 20 30 feet high there like that and these kind of features here the uh, archaeologists have called these kind of stones yoni yoni stones and Several of them have been, you know, cataloged, have been documented throughout the region. Some of these have even been enhanced. <clears throat> and uh, the word yoni they have adopted from somewhere in India as if it means vulva form. It doesn't really. It means source or origin, which we're back to what it is in this language, mul. Mul also means source or origin. And this one is very particular because of the way that it's pushing out. And so it's koel kore, meaning to push out like uh, a woman giving birth, she pushes, she pushes, she pushes. And that's what is indicated, you know, by, by this. Alongside of her, this is Coyote, Coyote who guards her. Coyote always guards her. <coughs> and here, these are mortars, these morteros, morteros, you know, uh, surround, surrounding it. And this is right on the edge of a drop-off, like if there was water, it would be a waterfall. And this is coming right up on the edge and surrounded by these morteros. Areas here where there are bedrock with morteros in it, uh, the Koya call for clothes, you know. <coughs> and they have names for, for the different ones of these. I get a drink. So this is this is you know a record of my uh, encounter there because that very day I came back home and I painted this as an impression. Here, this would figure as the current or the spirit that led me, you know, to to this site. I have called this whole site the portal because it, it was that. It was a doorway into something that has continued to open and open for me. So this is a little bit of this culture that we're talking about. I have one other thing here to show by hand. Uh, the main uh, 
areas for the Cahuilla to occupy is the main place for the native palm. And this native palm is out here in the desert and they actually cultured it in terms of managed it, you know, with, with fires and things like that to, to manage it. And these, this kind of palm goes down across the border into the Ipai territory. And this is a basket that's made by Christina, somebody I'm acquainted with, at the time made from the leaves of the fan palm. So it is a very, very important staple for these desert people for many things. I'm going to finish here with a poem. This is the writing and art of North American Indian women. This is what it is. And this one I've chosen is by Elaine Hall. She's of the creek. And uh, you see with the spider that I have here, it's called Spider World Spinner. Spider World Spinner, a baby in this life like you, I feel just hatched, scurrying out of the way of the bath water. You find refuge in a crack of the plaster. Some of the people found refuge in cliff dwellings cut out of red stone. Spider, world spinner, I think of how the sound of water teaches us. A music that sings about fear, betrayal, grocery money to be counted out against a hungry day. My ancestors, forced to leave their home, days of hunger made matter by the hands of enemies, snatching food from the mouths of nursing mothers. Spider, world spinner, my memories unroll like a line of spit. You and I have a memory older still, a memory of the time you swallowed a previous world swallowed and started over again.